but welcome to our 2023 Sol Horizon Rover. Starting right in your back corner here, you get your storage compartment, just pops on open, little magnetic latch holds it open for you. Inside of here, you're going to find your hitch, the weight distribution here that the customers opt to go with you, so we just got that stored in here, as well as the Bluetooth brake controller. In here, you're also going to find your water hose. Inside of the water hose is a park adapter. It's got a 30 amp end for your short cord to go into, 15 amp end so you can plug into your household outlet, charge your batteries, or run your fridge. Water hose itself is about 20, 25 feet long. Then right in the back here is all your manual overrides. So this hooker here would be for your stable or for your uh, weight distribution hitch there. We'll show you that once you hook up. This guy here is the manual override for your awning. A little three quarter inch bit here. It's going to be for all your stabilizer jacks. You've got them in each corner of the trailer. All they do is they run down, contact the ground, give another eighth turn or so just to firm it up and that'll get rid of any sort of bouncer sway that you have in the unit right now just to keep things firm while you're out camping. And then lastly, right in the back there, you're going to find that little black kind of tarp. That goes around the front of the unit just to protect that glass, just so that's not from getting damaged while you're out traveling. Right ahead from there, you're going to find your water heater. So you're just going to line up that keyway there and you can let, pop it on open. All your controls for turning it on are just inside the unit. Before we turn it on though, we just want to hit this relief valve right there. Make sure you're getting that little bit of water coming out. If you're not getting any water coming out of there, there is a chance that it's empty and you do run the risk of burning out your elements. So you just want to make sure it's full before firing it up. Once you're done, just closing it back down with the keyway. Up from there is your water inlets. On the left side here is your fresh water tank fill. You pop that guy open, your water hose will stick into there. Turn on the water and that fills up the fresh water tank. You know that tank is full just by watching your monitor panel inside. Right beside that you've got your city water inlet. Put water hose will plug into there, turn on the water and that pressurizes the lines throughout the unit. You also have this little door here that you can open up so you can close this up and run your water hose up through it. Straight down underneath there, right in the back of the unit, you're going to find your spare tire. It's just hung up right in the back there. Up beside your water inlet is a cable and satellite inlet. Coax cable plugs into there, fires up at your TV location. Beside that's your short cord inlet, so as you pop it open, there's a little notch in the bottom corner there. Lines up with this notch here. We're going to press those in together. The little eighth turn is going to lock it into place. Then you get the threaded collar in the back there to properly lock it down. As you follow the cord back, you find a standard 30 amp end. Most campsites have that for you. You can just plug straight on in and you're good to go. Towards the front, get the exhaust for your furnace here. So if you're ever running your furnace, you just make sure it's not blocked off. It does get hot. Right down underneath, it's your sewer system. You're going to press on this cap, give it a little turn. It'll pop on out of there. Then you just get your gate valve on the one side there. You pop that open. Everything drains on out. Your sewer hose is stored right beside it. You get this little latch there, pops open. Then you can get your sewer hose on out of there. You see it's got the same ears on it that your sewer hose had or just that the cap had. Attached the same way. Storing that back away and locking it back down. There's also that little latch there so you can kind of lock it in place. Up from there you'll find a solar panel plug-in. Little two-prong plug goes into there, charges your batteries. This vent right here is for your battery, so you just want to make sure it's not blocked off while it's charging, especially. These two clips here, we're going to undo those. And then this front panel will pop out of place and we get access to your propane tanks. So you can see the changeover right in the front here is pointing over to this tank and it's currently red so it's letting us know we'd be running off of this tank and we've got no propane. As we open it up it'll go blank. All right, and that's letting us know we've now got propane in the system. If it were to go red while well, you got that tank open, it's just letting you know it's now empty. At that point just close it off and flip the change over to the other side and run off of that tank while you get the other one filled. In the front of the unit is a power tongue jack. On the left you get a switch, turns on the light. And on the right is your up and down. With your battery disconnect switch turned off, that's not going to work. So we do have that turned off inside right now. This little standoff would be a 4A leg for your awning. So once you have that open up all the way, there's a couple of legs out in the head. You'll just pop those out. They come down into here. They have little feet that'll slide in. You lock it down into place. Little ball knob right there. Magnet just controls it or connects it to the door there. Holds it open for you. GFI protected outlets. So you've got power outside. Straight up from there is your porch light. Then in the back here, you get your little spray port. So your hose just tucks inside of there to pull that head on out. Then your quick connect end, you're gonna push that collar back, press it in, and that's this line then connected into your cold water system. You're not gonna get any hot, just cold. Then you just kind of open it up to get it going. Once you're done, push that collar in, undo it. Then you're gonna stretch it out, just open up the one end, just drain out all the water just so that you're not storing that water. And then you just take that head, stuff it into the coil, and tuck it back away. 
Then the back here is your exterior kitchen. Magnetic latches hold it open again. On the right side here, you're gonna push that knob down and you can extend it, pull it on out. And you get your cooler fridge here. So has that travel latch, then do that. Then you can pop it on open. So that is the 120 volt connection or plug in for it right there. It is all plugged into 12 volt system right in the back. There's also a 120 volt outlet back there. So you got a bit more power outside. Right in the back of the cooler here is all your controls. It's kind of on the top here. You get the on the power button is on the right there. You just press and hold to turn that on. Press and hold the set to control all of that. And then you get your up and down on the side there. Once you're done, just closing it back off. A little utensil holder right in the back. Then for your griddle, your propane line for it's right in the back here. We're just going to undo that. And then right underneath the unit, you get that dust cap. You can push the collar back and insert your hose. Turn on that valve. That'll turn on the flow of propane. Then you can come to the knob here. You're just going to press it in and just kind of rapidly turn and pass the light there. Just as it clears the air out of the propane lines, you can see it fires right up. Once you're done, just turning it off, letting it cool down and storing it back away. For the propane line, you're going to close off that safety valve. Then you can undo that collar, put that dust cap back in place, and tuck your hose back away. To bring it back in, you just got to push that handle back down again, and you can slide it back away. And then in the back of the unit, you just get your backup camera up there. So that is a aftermarket option that we installed for this customer. You do have a handheld unit that'll plug inside of your tow vehicle so that you can monitor. Now so making our way inside of the unit here, your door just opens on up and like I pointed out earlier, you just get that magnetic latch to hold it open for you. Your step up and out, it is just the single step. As you come on in, first things first, right on the left there, you get your fire extinguisher, that's standard, pull the pin, point and shoot. Right beside it is the handheld unit and the rest of the accessories for your observation camera. So that's just a simple uh, DC plug into your 12 volt outlet inside of your vehicle. And then you have a windshield mount for the camera itself. Straight up from there, you get all your light switches. So on the right there, we get our bedroom lights. Main lights are center right or middle right, whatever you want to call it. Cabinet lights are accents, right? It's kind of on the side there in the middle. Dinette accent just kind of does the little blue lights above the mentioned areas. Exterior front end access is a little white light or blue light, sorry, across the very front of the unit. And then porch light gets that amber light outside. GFI protected outlet right beside it. Test on the right, reset on the left. So if you ever have outlets that don't work, it's the first thing you should check. Up the wall from there, you're going to find your kitchen accent switch. Then above that is your awning switch. Press and hold out and that awning will make its way out. Once it's out all the way, it just kind of stops in place. All right. I'm not going to go all the way out today just because I don't think I have room for it, but I can show you these legs in the head here. So on either end, you'll have this little latch there. You just pull that over. And then in the foot here, you have this little latch up here. Just pull that up and that'll undo the tension. Then you can slide them, lock it into place wherever you like it. And then that's the foot here that will slide into that little plastic mount up in the front. Once you're done, bringing them back up, tucking it back into place. Make sure it slides and locks in. And then we're just going to press and hold in again. Once it's in all the way, it'll just kind of tuck up and close itself. And there we go. So across the front of the unit, you're going to find a little light on either side. So if you press it once, you get that little accent light. Press it twice and you get the actual light. And you can, of course, move it around. Press it again and it goes white. And again to turn it off. Same light on this side here. You also get your two front speakers there. Front cabinet has kind of your accessories for your table here. So the table is currently, or sorry, your dinette is currently set up as a dinette, of course. If you're to take this tabletop and just kind of pull it up and out of the leg, the leg will then unscrew from the base. So you just get this one little knob there. You're going to press that in. That'll undo the lock and then you can unthread it. Basically, that lock just clicks into there as a ratcheting system. And then you'd be replacing it with this leg. Your table will then sit onto this leg. I'll take that extra cushion up there and that'll create your bed. I do believe it is storage underneath those two uh, cushions there. This cushion here is access to your battery. Microwave's right up top there, just pops on open. Right around the corner from it, you're gonna find a 12 volt power outlet as well as USB charging, 120 volt outlet beside it. Battery disconnect switch is right there, turning it off to the right side that has it turned on, just a little vent underneath it. For the converter here, you just pop it on open, all of your breakers are on the left there, whenever a breaker breaks, it sits in the center, so just turn it off and then back on to reset it, all of your fuses are on the right side. 
Around the corner again, we get your monitor panel. So in the bottom left corner there, you get your water pump switch. So you turn that on, just turns on your water pump, drawing out of your fresh tank to pressurize your lines. Tank heaters, basically just little pads on to all your tanks to prevent them from freezing. Your water heater on gas is center left there, or sorry, on the right side there. Turn that switch on, you get that little red light there, letting you know the ignition sequence will start. Once that sequence has started, that light will go out. It's going to try that three times. If after the third try it hasn't fired up, this light's going to come on and stay on. At that point, just back off and on to reset it. Water heater on electricity is on the right side there. For your monitor systems, up in the top left, you get battery. So you can see we're currently 12.3. That would be a charging voltage. That's good. Fresh tank is currently full, so we'll drain that out right away. I'll just show you where all those locations are. Then your black and your gray tanks there. You do just have the one tank, so it is just black that'll work. Radio's right beside it. Power button there is also your mute button, so just press and hold to turn it back off. Zone A is your inside set, sorry, your front set. Zone B is your back set. Fridge, just get that little thumb latch there. You pull that down, open it on up. Pretty straightforward. It is a 12 volt fridge, so as long as your batteries are charged or charging, this guy's going for you. Little storage drawer underneath it. They're all on anti slams, so they just kind of stop themselves. Furnace outlet right down beneath it. So of course this is not ducted, it is just outletting right here. So if you do have that going, maybe just want to have your fan on as well, just kind of help move that air around. Once this guy's fired up down in the bottom left corner, you'll be able to see the actual blue glow just so that you can actually have a visual confirmation that your furnace is working. Storage up in the top of your kitchen here. So that binder on the left side there has got all of your owner's manuals, any remotes, any keys, anything like that, you're gonna find right in there. Down into the kitchen, you get your stove top. Just pops on open, you're going to press that knob in towards light, press and hold that igniter, and it just fires right up. Once you're done, just turning it back off, letting it cool down, and closing it off again. All the drawer space underneath. So there's your TV and the stereo remote up from the top there. Okay. Storage underneath the sink here as well, just being mindful of your drains and your water lines. Of course, don't want to be breaking those. Hot and cold water at the sink, you also have the shower head feature, it kind of moves around. The sew cover, or sorry, the sink cover is foldable there. In the bedroom, you have your two speakers there, of course. One little clock there, it just pulls on out, has a little battery right in the back of it. TV here on this travel strap, so you just pull that down. That'll undo the lock, then you can pull it out, point it where you like it. Right behind it here, you're going to find those AV cables. There are, those are hooked into your stereo, so you can use your speakers for your kind of surround sound. Up above it is your antenna outlet. Turning that antenna on, just that little button there, turns on that light, letting you know it is turned on. Power outlet for the TV there. Vent control right down here. So you press that fan on, that'll open up the vent and turn on the fan. Then you have your speed selection, one, two, three, and four. You press fan off, it'll close it as well. And then if you just wanted to open it up and let some air out, just press vent open if you like. Right beside it's your thermostat. You can press that left side there. It'll wake it up. Press it again. It'll come into your fan speed. At this point, you can select your low or high, just if you're looking to move some air around. Otherwise, we're going to leave that in auto. Hit mode again. It'll come into cool. But at this point, you can come up to your air conditioner, and you have these louvers on either side as well as the bottom of it. So those are just kind of choosing where you're shooting your air. And so just open them and close them at your, at your liking. Temp selection just with your arrows here. Hit mode again after cool, it'll come down into furnace. It'll turn off the air conditioner, turn on your furnace. Once you're done with that, press power button again. It'll come down into off and then just turn everything off. To tuck this TV back away, you're just pressing it in until it clicks. That's it locked in. In the back corner, you get the same sort of little accent lights there. We just have a little touch pad and just all open storage. In the back corner there is another bedroom light switch. It is tied in with the one that is at the entrance. They kind of work opposite of each other, so I can turn it off now. And then I could go up front and turn it back on again if I liked. Okay. On this side of the bed here, you've got your emergency exit. So you're just pulling this red tab there to get rid of the screen. Take the sandal here, open it up, and hop on out. A little hanging rack up here, so you just pop that on open. Stands up, you get somewhere to hang some stuff, clicks back closed. Up above that is your smoke detector. It goes for a very long time, so I'm not going to test that today. Bathroom's right in here. So just pop that on open. Light switch is straight off to the right. Flip, flips on open, you get your flusher right on the right side there. For the shower, you get the black head and hose with the kind of pan head. Hot and cold water, of course. 
the toilet paper dispenser here slips on open kind of covers itself up just so that you're not getting all the paper wet of course straight up from there you'll find your vent you just pull this handle down open it up where you like it back corner there's a switch that turns on the fan close it just the same thing and then lastly we'll just get down into your water system here so you have this little drawer that opens on up right down underneath it is your LP detector, propane to everything there, sits on the floor, that guy detects it and starts going off like your smoke detector would. Now if we pick up your mattress, you have these two little access panels here, pop this one open, right in the back there you'll find your water pump, it does have a water winterizing kit installed already, you'd open up that valve and this valve right down here, you'd close that off. The drain for your fresh water tank is this guy right here, you open that up, allows the fresh tank to drain itself out. Then that valve on that line there is a low point drain. You open that up, that allows your hot water system to drain itself out. And for your cold water, its drain is just right here. Winterize your unit, your access to your hot water tank is also just right back there. So you can pop this panel up and get to it. And simple as that. So that's about it for this unit. If you've got any other questions on it, please feel free to give us a call. 204-237-7272.